Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. If you're struggling to maintain or change a large system or looking to reduce complexity, then you need to understand cohesion. I'm gonna explain what cohesion is at a high level in a couple different ways, and I'll jump into some code to show it more at a low level. If you're interested in more about these topics around software architecture and design, make sure to subscribe. So you might've heard of cohesion before, and it's generally related to coupling because cohesion and coupling, in my opinion, are kind of the yin and yang of software design. And to kind of give it a definition, I'll use from structured design. The quote is degrees to which the elements inside a module belong together. So what I think what most people probably have heard of, which is directly related to cohesion, is the single responsibility principle, which states a class should have one and only one reason to change. So if you heard that definition before and were really confused by it, and you thought about it was dependencies or you read all other kinds of things about what that actually meant, there was a blog post by the author, Robert C. Martin, many years ago on his blog, and this is a snippet from it, but it really comes down to it being about people and roles. So if you have to make a change, it's coming directly from the business function related to that change. If you have a particular class or module and there requires a change from it, it's because it's related to a specific business function. And the people that are getting you to change that are directly the related to the users that use that business function. So there's two ways that I want to talk about cohesion. The first is informational cohesion, which I think is probably the most common, which is you're grouping your functions or methods around the data structures that you're working on. The second is functional cohesion, which is instead you're grouping your methods or functions around behaviors, around tasks, around operations that you need to perform. The reason why I say informational cohesion is probably the most prominent way people organize code is because this post illustrates it. So this was from Reddit where somebody was asking, I have this simple data model and I'm creating microservices for these tables. What's the best approach? Do I have a microservice per table? Now the, even the thought that you're gonna have services around individual tables kind of proves my point. But the reality of it is in large systems, the idea of having a single entity live in a single table just isn't reality. And I'll give an illustration of this and this is the idea, uh, a concept of a product in a warehouse, which I use in most of my videos. So we have this uh, entity, we think of it as a table or a document, where it has a SKU, which is an identifier, a name, description, price that we're selling it for, our costs from our vendors, maybe the location of where that lives in the warehouse, the quantity on hand that we think we have in the warehouse, whether it's available for sale and whether we can actually more buy more from our vendor. So if you think about single responsibility related to roles and them being like business function centric, if we look at this particular entity, well, what are all the different roles involved? In a warehouse, you have sales, purchasing, the warehouse, uh, finance for accounting. There's a whole different number of roles involved. So if we think about this product, well, the SKU, the name, and the description is probably just owned by some catalog service or what products we're potentially gonna sell or buy. The price in the available for sale is from sales. That's the, they care about the actual price because that's what they're selling it for. So if you're doing any sales related functions, those are the actual things about a product that you care about. If we're talking about purchasing, when they're ordering them from the vendor or manufacturer, they care about the costs and whether they can still purchase it from a particular vendor. And then in the warehouse, they don't care about any of that stuff. They care about where the location is in the warehouse, how many they have on hand. So each different role has a different perspective about what they're concerned with. And then related to that is the business functions that they have in those given roles are different. So if you're thinking about informational cohesion, you're gonna be thinking this way. You're gonna be thinking about, you have this large schema and one entity needs to live in one, only one part of the system. But if you're thinking about functional cohesion, and you're thinking about roles in their interactions in single responsibility, then you're not gonna have a single product in the system. You're gonna have a concept of a product live in multiple parts of the system, in multiple services. So maybe you have the concept of a product that lives in the catalog, and it's the one that originally owns the SKU. And then the uh, sales service has that same concept of a product with that same SKU, but it manages the price, whether it's available for sale, it can increase the price, et cetera. And the, the warehouse, again, it has that SKU, but it cares about different things. It cares about shipping product and receiving product and doing inventory adjustments. 
So when you're thinking about functional cohesion, you're thinking about functions, behaviors, and capabilities of what the system does. You're not going to have an entity live in a single place. So that's cohesion at a high level, but let's take this at a practical level in code. And this is a much lower level that I'm going to show. So all my developer level members of my channel get access to the source code that I'm about to show. So if you're interested in joining, go to my channel, click the join button. So here's a made up example that I created. Let me know in the comments if you can relate to this. So I have a product service that has a few different methods um, for updating and getting some product out. So you can get product by SKU, you can get product for sale by SKU and get a list of products. And for an actual usage here, if I look at this particular class, um, I'm injecting the I product service and I'm calling the single method of get product by SKU and I just pass in some SKU. I translate that uh, result to some view model and then return that to the caller. So if we look at this interface, what's the cohesion? Obviously we have everything grouped related to products and that's in our product service. But if we jump back to the actual implementation, we're requesting this interface and we're using it, but we're using one method, one of the four. So what really relates in that interface other than it was related to a product? There's not a lot of operations that we're doing. We're calling one method on it. So if you have one method that you're using, do you really want that interface? Do you want that object? Or do you really just want a function? So another interesting way to look at this is to actually look at the test. And here what I've done is I've created a mock using a mocking library. Now I could have created my own implementation, a stub of iProductService, but the end result that I'm about to show is still the same consequence. So here's my test, it's passed, I'm using a mocking library. But what happens if we change our implementation? Right now, I'm actually only setting up this get product by SKU that returns a new product. I haven't implemented all the different methods. Um, I haven't mocked any of those out. So if I go back to the actual implementation, and let's say there was a bug and I do get product for sale by SKU, well, I haven't mocked that. So now this test is gonna fail. So thinking about this iProduct service, what cohesion does it have? Well, it's informational cohesion because all the methods are grouped really related to the structure that it's working on, which is a product. And if we think about the usage of that interface, we were using one method, one method. So again, I asked the question, did you want that object, that interface, or did you really just want a function? In c -sharp land, delegates are functions. Just like interfaces have implementations, delegates have implementations. So if I expose those implementations, I have get product by SKU and get product for sale by SKU, if I actually look at the usage, I'm now injecting the delegate and I'm using that delegate. And if I look at the test, magically, there's no more mocking framework. There's no more mocking library. I'm just creating a stub and implementation of that delegate and passing it as a dependency. So let's change that implementation again, just like I did before to see what happens. So if I jump over to the implementation, there's that same bug where we only wanted to get stuff by, for sale. So I change it here. I jump back over to our test. I rerun it and it's still passing. When I'm thinking about cohesion, I'm thinking about functional cohesion, not informational cohesion. I'm trying to group things by tasks, by roles, and thinking about single responsibility, about people, the roles, the tasks that they are doing. That's how I wanna group behaviors. You might be able to see why if you can increase cohesion, you're gonna reduce coupling because you're not gonna have interconnected components needing to communicate each other over the same data they're gonna have the data they need because they're doing business functions that relate to each other. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And as always, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.